Okay, so time for the longer wrap-up of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And I swear, one of the reasons we like that show as Gen Xers is because she just fucks with people. And it's like, yeah, tell them they're idiots and don't give a shit. <laughs> anyway, here's the thing. And people can, can negate this or whatever and try to give you excuses on why not to do this type of thing. When it comes to doing smart home technology, okay, this is the kind of thing that really should exist. It, it's, it's, it's been available. This has been, it, it, it's dying for this to happen, okay? But nobody has taken the fucking balls to actually do it. And no, I'm not going to do it. Why? Because I don't have to, okay? I, yeah, see this? Yeah, right? It's not because of age, okay? It's it's because I worked hard enough because now I don't have to work ever again and I'm not going to. But I'd like my kids to grow up in a, in a world that is a little bit better, okay? So I'm giving these fucking ideas away, all right? So what we have is an industry, the heating and air conditioning system. These are systems that people depend on, okay? And when I talk about people are just dying for something like this to happen, how many times do we hear about this super cold winter and people are dying and Texas is being overrun and there's no power and the this and that and all kinds of problems happening that shut down your ability to provide heat and just basic environmental controls in a world that yeah, it goes up and down. Don't get into the climate shit. Just, yes, it gets hot, gets cold. In the heat, even when I was a kid, they were talking about, oh, this is the hottest weather and, and all these old people died because they didn't have ACs and all the rest of this. These are things that people rely on, okay? And as a thing that people rely on, it comes down to security. You want to know why the ring little things are so big right now like everybody wants a ring why because they can see without being there they can talk to the person while they're gone i was bugging a neighbor about something and all of a sudden he answered the door and he's like yeah i'm not even home dude i just i saw this and i oh it's you i'll answer i was like okay these are things people want to feel more secure having those cameras on their doorbell that's a quick, simple, throw it up. It's already got wire going to it. It's already got power. You don't have to worry about charging it. It's gonna have a source. It's right there. It's a camera. It's not doing everything in the world. You're not some security freak, but you know what? I can look at that and the videos are available for a while and it, it's, it's a nice little solution that provides you security. Well, I want home security, not just physical home security. I want operational security. Okay. Home operational security. Hey, hoss. That was the little thing I, I had said. in one of the things is people want to know that, yes, if shit happens, we're good. We're going to be okay. All right. And things are going to be okay. And things are going to work. Okay. And the thing is, is that stuff like this could be made a lot easier and a lot more safe for people who are out there to feel, hey, I'm gonna be okay, things are going to be operational. And you can play it into climatology and do all of this other stuff to say, hey, we now have the ability to do this, okay? But it's, it's, it's saying, look, you're not gonna have to freeze, you're not gonna have to burn up. And part of that is knowing when these systems are going to break down and knowing that maintenance is being done, okay? I give, I give plumbers and, and HVAC and all the guys a bunch of grief because you guys get pissy about DIYers. You're never gonna stop the DIYer. They're, it doesn't matter how hard you make it, they're gonna do it because they're too fucking broke to pay you and they need it, okay? I need heating, I need AC. And if I'm too broke to pay you to do it, I'm gonna figure the fuck out. And I don't care how much I screw it up in the process, I will figure it out and get it done, okay? I don't care if I have to sit in the damn garage with a fucking bicycle, my wife and kids are gonna be warm and happy, yes, 
okay? So stop trying to worry about those because there are, for every DIY that knows how to do those things, there's a hundred other people, okay? I wouldn't even say one in a hundred do DIY shit like this on all kinds of stuff. They might do one thing or another, but not all of it. So stop bitching about them. Use them to your advantage. Say, look, how could I make it foolproof for them? Because that makes my job easier. I could come and do it for the other hundred 20 times faster if the DIYer can do it. Okay? So stop fucking doing that shit. When it comes to doing your house and making sure it's taken care of, the only people that are doing any kind of advancement on this are number one, the thermostat people. Okay, the, the thermostat people are, are, are coming out with these smart thermostats. And they've got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and blah, 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 blah. Oh, it's a fucking scheduler. It's a $15, $20, $30 thing. Thank God they're doing it. Because God forbid we still pay Honeywell 80 bucks to 150 bucks for a fucking little timer box. Oh my God. God, are you talking about the most simplistic programming? I'm not hitting you the most simplistic programming piece that there is, okay? But they've done it, and they've got these things for super cheap, and they're putting Wi-Fi and the rest of this because people want to know that they can see what's going on. When you're in the car, do you fucking need to know what the temperature is of your engine? But there's a gauge in every fucker's car. Do you really need to know, okay? This thing and that thing and these things. No. It's so that you feel like you have control. The whole reason we give you those gauges and everything is so that the vast majority of people feel like they have control. That shit doesn't actually tell you dick about what's going on with your car, what's wrong with it. No. Well, that's what's going on with these thermostats. They're giving people the illusion of control. And I'm telling you that, guess what? They love that illusion, regardless of whether it's real or not. And you should give them the real thing, because if you gave them the real thing, then their balls would all get lit up, okay? They'd love the fuck out of it. And it's dying for it, because every time you're on the news and you hear, oh, the shit went bad, what could have been done to save these people who, who ended up dying because it got too, too hot and their systems failed? What could we have done to save these people who the heaters were running out? And it's like, why haven't we done this before? Nobody's providing an answer. You could provide that answer, and that's marketing for you, okay? So, when I was talking about the pieces, I'm sitting there and saying, okay, you have your furnace, you have your thermostat, and you have your AC unit outside, okay? And part of the thermostat, let's go ahead and put this here, part of the thermostat is, I was saying, you need to put in a small board, okay? Here's the thing. Having the nice little smart thermostat, that's cool. But giving somebody a control console, oh. Giving them a controller. You can do this stuff remotely on your phone. Yes, you can. It's remotely available on your phone. You can have an app. That's great, and that's good when you're going out and everything, but you know what? The one that's here, oh, this one's even better than your phone because your phone, you might have different apps and whatever, and you could probably do it actually on everything on your phone but that's your, your carry around whatever this one stays with the house this is like sure i can use my phone to remote control my fire sticks and do that stuff they have a remote control app for your phone but i still have the remote in the house and i always use that damn remote because it's for the house it's when i'm here i'm comfortable in doing that that's what this is i don't need my phone my phone is for other stuff i'm busy with that okay but if I really want to see some good stuff, that's where I have my console, my command center. I'm in control of my home, okay? And having a thermostat that you can take off the wall and use and not have the system shut down. Because that's what happens with all these thermostats. They pull them off the wall and it disconnects them from the wires in the back and boom, you're gone. Here's the other thing. Getting these things, the furnace and the AC unit, to talk to a network, a reliable network that can communicate with your phone and get it talking. It's great that they put Bluetooth. I, IMC is trying to, do, they are so flaking off on this. They could literally just crank this out so easy, but they're not. They're, they're doing proprietary work is what they did. Um, so 
giving all of these the ability to communicate, you've already got wired connections. You've got these HVAC wires. That is more than enough. More than enough to cover everything from some from single pair ethernet communication levels where you're doing power and communication over just one pair of wires. These are big ass fucking awesome wires. They can carry all the current that anybody would ever need for these electronics to use, okay? They're a hundred times more than, than what we have. Think about it, the little cable, the little USB-C cable. You know how thin that fucker is? Okay, there's 24 wires in that little cable, 24 and those do the job, they work. Oh, and it only goes this distance. Yeah, but it's cheap. That's why, it's because it's cheap. This, you're already pre-wired. You don't have to do wiring of everybody's houses. You already have it, okay? So you have a thermostat and you put in a piece on the thermostat that can say, yes, I can recognize that I have an older system and that's why I'm using the four wires for this or the seven wires for this in this way. But now I know that I'm talking to a more advanced board. Oh, I can change up my communication and I can do this instead. That's where that can work, okay? You can repurpose those wires and do it. So on the inside, underneath your command center that you could pick up and take around is gonna be a simple little board that holds a copy of the schedule that you set using the user interface, which is basically any standard little $30 tablet, okay? I'm not kidding you. You can buy five for a dollar of OLED one inch screens. And what can be presented on that is a ton of shit, okay? The idea that you, you think it's gonna cost a ton, no, it's not, okay? And I'm talking about five for $15 retail the retail price of an OLED screen is three dollars for little tech guys okay so this is cheap and when I sit there and say retail I'm saying this because then you know that the manufacturer already did his markup and the reseller already did his markup to get this so you're already ten times higher than what a manufacturer would pay to get those parts done okay so it's 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 ludicrously cheap all right um you have a board which does both holding a copy of the schedule and it has your bluetooth and wireless they come together the bluetooth and and, and the wi-fi why and why do you want it inside because that's where people are nobody's out in the garage okay Newer networks, the, the, the new AX stuff, they're getting much better on distance and able to handle things. Um, I recently upgraded some of my routers from N because basically I was doing a bunch of stuff here in the garage and I needed to be able to access you know information on my phone or whatever and I couldn't do it. But not everybody has that, but everybody has Wi-Fi somewhere in their house normally. And if they have Wi-Fi in their house, then they're gonna be people who want connectivity internet something if they don't have any Wi-Fi in their house well then they're not gonna want your shit anyway because they don't they don't care about it they just want it to work and walk away now so this you have communication and you have schedule so now you can operate even if the thermostat has been taken off somebody breaks it they can go get another one but until then it even has a little reset switch to just run by schedule if somebody you know up and down the temperature and put it on hold or something. And they have this, or maybe you have it as a second command center line where it's got one of those $3 OLEDs that sits right here next to the command center. And then this has the ability to just, all it's got super minimal abilities on it, okay? But have this there so that you have the connectivity onto the wireless network in people's homes. Where's the thermostat? In the home where people are. Where do people put their wireless? In the home where that is. Do they have it in the garage? Not a lot of people do. So, you can communicate out to there. The furnace. The basic essence of these furnaces, the procedures are, are near identical. It's almost like how Microsoft has generic um, drivers Okay, because that's what you're talking about here. You're talking about a board that has a driver to communicate with 
this, okay? And you can download the drivers using your console saying, hey, I need the driver for this heater. I need the driver for that heater. It's no different. It literally is the same, okay? And yes, communicating through the command center, through these wires, over to the furnace, it can happen. If you don't have the thermostat on, on the furnace, if you're just doing a furnace and AC or whatever, on the furnace, put a small OLED that sits there and says, hey, we're doing procedure one, procedure two, we're doing this, lights this, okay, did this, okay, did this, okay, something, have it up there. Or you can have it just sitting there without the LED on and you have a little button on the top that, that undoes the screensaver function, okay? It's very, very simple type stuff. Um, in there, you're gonna have all the resistors, all the, 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 the MOSFETs, all of the, the, the relays that you need, you can do it, okay? You're looking at very minimal parts to be able to be capable of having a board. Think of it like a motherboard, a board that can do everything. And anything that would be super extra, you could have an expansion slot, okay? that allows people to put more on. Oh, you want a video something card on here. You want a PCIe type card. Those motherboard expansions, okay? You have, what, five SATA connectors on there? Yeah. Okay, I've got six SATA connectors. Well, I've only got five little uh, limit switches. So, I'm giving you an extra one because we're making sure there's plenty. It costs nothing to put a couple extra on there, okay? Those kind of things, you can do that on there, and it's not gonna cost a lot. Think about it, you can buy a motherboard for 100 bucks, and those things have got, trying to be realistic here, those have got seriously a thousand times more processing power, I'm gonna tell you that flat out. Um, and, and if I took one motherboard and cut it to about that big, okay, that's about how much circuitry that's going on inside of here, out of a motherboard that's like this, okay? It's nothing, okay? So you, the, the idea that you would have to pay a lot to build the smaller board, no, okay? In the furnace, you're gonna have that multimeter function, okay? That's able to test each of the relays. You're gonna have extra slots on the board, why? Because sure, first the person buys your board and swaps it out and now they've got a smart board that they can talk to and see how efficient it is and how much money they're saving on being energy efficient and how much they can track all of these things and they can log all of the sensors and everything and how well things are doing. You can sit there and run an, a diagnostic once a day and say, yeah, Everything's great. Run a diagnostic once a week. Once a day would actually be great. It doesn't matter if you have it. That, uh, that diagnostic report is less than, you could store years and years, you could store 20 years on a four gig chip of everything on this thing. Four gig chip and you've got all of it forever, okay? Or a four meg chip practically. Um, but, on top of that, you add extra slots so that people can upgrade. Ooh, add on selling. You've got upgrades. What are you doing? You're putting in a airflow, an airspeed sensor at the top and an airspeed sensor, sensor at the bottom. Hmm. You've got the temperature at the top, temperature at the bottom. Wouldn't it be nice to know what it started at, what it became, how efficient is your system running? How fast is the blade running? Is it going at the optimal speed to provide this? How many CFMs are you doing? You can estimate those type of pieces. All of this is stuff that you can put in there, okay, and advance these things to make them even better. So going out to existing customers, sure. The new systems going out, you can push for new systems having your, your stuff. Existing customers, now you're selling boards like crazy and all the HVAC guys are out there going, we're installing them for these people and guess what? Next thing you know, hey, we need to have these things because it does provide better energy efficiency. We can track all of these different things. And then on top of it, you're sitting there and saying, okay, with that multimeter function, you're able to monitor the, the, the blower motor. 
you're able to monitor the capacitor. You're able to see that whether or not the capacitance on that, okay, your farad levels are going out of spec. If they're slowly going out of spec, you know that's gonna break soon. And you're able to build in a little trigger that says, hey, you're gonna need one of these soon, okay? You can build in a trigger that tells you that. If your airflow is cut, you've got an over, you got an overheat in the, in the system up here. Okay, the limit switch went off. Let's say you even know exactly which limit switch went off. Oh, it tested the wire, it's one in the back by the blower. That went off. Why? Why? Did it go off because it overheated because it, the, the, the flame was, was coming out too high? Did it overheat because the blower motor stopped? Why did the blower motor stop? Did the blower motor stop because the blower motor itself failed? Or maybe it got jammed by the filter. I've seen filters get pulled out and, and, and drop down. They get clogged and all of a sudden the pressure drops it into the damn fan blades and, and, and stops it. If you're not knowing that the motor has been stopped, you can burn out the capacitors. If the capacitor burns out and the motor keeps trying to crank on, 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 you burn out that motor. You're saving yourself a $150 to $200 repair, and I'm talking about just the part cost of that motor, okay? Because you knew the airspeed had stopped. Airspeed had stopped and the capacitor failed, okay? Airspeed stopped, okay? We have a problem. It's not... The cooling's not happening. Airspeed's not going anywhere. Okay, we need to stop and, and look at this and see what's going on. Is the blower motor cranking up? Are we doing this? Are we sensing this? All of that can be told with those multimeter functions built in. And then coming out on the little screen saying, this is actually what's wrong. This is this code. Okay, so the code says that this failed. This part is sensing that this is too low, okay? but also providing that to give you more information on what could be wrong and better diagnostic information for you. Right now, you walk over and you're sitting here with the damn multimeter going nuts, trying to figure out what went wrong when. You don't know. It doesn't tell you jack. This would. Additionally, having a small board, again, just maybe about as big as this, big enough, okay, to have a relay that talks to the contactor to run the power through that. Maybe add a couple of wires so you can do uh, monitoring of the, con the conductor itself to make sure it's good. Um, you've got the blower motor out there. You could add another airspeed sensor on that just to make sure if they wanted to upgrade that. But if you just sat there and said, I'm gonna put this out here so that we know if the motor's failing and if the, the, the capacitor's failing or the compressor's failing. I've seen people where the capacitor failed and the capacitor failed and by the end of the day, the blower motor had burned up and the compressor had burned up. Why? Because a fucking 10 to $15 capacitor had failed. Burned out the whole system because nothing shut down saying, okay, we're gonna just keep trying and trying and trying. We're not actually gonna do anything. We're not seeing and, and, and sensing that this is back online, okay? We keep doing a diagnostic check and the diagnostic check says this is offline. It says it's not running. It's not going to run. If I try to run it and, it, and we do the run thing, there's no error. I'm not gonna keep trying because we're just cranking it down. It's like hitting the starter and the car won't start and you're just burning out the battery and burning up your starter. What good does that do you, okay? Well, it was the fuel pump. Great, now you need a new battery and a starter. I've seen that happen. These don't have a way to stop that. You could be providing that. And the idea that you could be sitting there and saying this capacitor is looking like it's got no more than a couple months left on its life, okay? You need to replace it in this amount of time. You are heading off those catastrophes that I mentioned in the very beginning. Now you're telling people, hey, you need to at least make sure you have a, one of these capacitors that goes to your machine ready. Even if you're not going to do the repair yourself, just order one. And when it fails, call the mechanic out to have it come fixed, okay? And say, look, I bought a spare. Can you come put it in? My system said that this was gonna be failing soon. I bought a spare capacitor so that we'd have it. Can you come look and see if that's what happened and, and just swap it out? 
okay? You're still getting called out for the work, you're still doing this stuff, but people have heads up that they need this stuff, okay? You selling these things, getting these built, okay? There's a full market just dying to be used. You see the computer industry, you see all of these other industries where people are paying attention to them and they are working hard to improve things and everybody's going, the tool industry, oh, everybody uses, you know, mechanic tools, oh, we've, tools have been improving like crazy lately because people are putting more attention on it. Well, guess what? Nobody's paying attention to water heaters and the furnaces and all the rest of that. And again, the idea goes past this so that once you've sat there and come out and said, look, we now have a motherboard and a full set of drivers that can run any heater out there. Why don't we hook up the washer and dryer? LG, Samsung, they're already starting to do these things. It's, if, if, if somebody in America doesn't come up with this or doesn't start doing the work on this, they're going to pass it by. It's not like this isn't going to happen. Okay? It's gonna. So... Once you do that, now you've got that thermostat acting as the control center and you start working with people on standards. Oh, well, you need to report your thing to control centers this way. Now you have an operating system, an Android operating system or even a Raspberry operating system, a customized operating system. And the operating system is gonna say, look, when I get a report from the washer, it's gonna give me this information. When I get a report from that, got information. Oh, heck, on the motors, you could use tachometers. There's tachometers and washers for, for barrel spin speeds and stuff like that. I've, I've had to replace those things. Those are, those are like, it's like 10 bucks and it includes a, 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 an actuator for shifting the tranny, okay? Those things are cheap as dirt, okay? So having sensors like that are real easy add-ons that you can do upgrades for people. Adding in those other pieces so that now you have a control center that has a copy of all the logs and all of the little reports to say this is how it's been operating, this is what's been going down. I look at the I look at the performance report and it says, ooh, it says right here that the, the capacitor's been go slowly going out of spec. It's doing this. Ooh, by the way, you could improve efficiency by doing this. You could improve efficiency by doing that. Oh, now you're playing on to the, to the environmental freaks. Now you're like, ooh, we've got to have these things because that's more environmentally friendly. And you've got people wanting them for that. You've got people going, ooh, I've got the greatest tech house in the world. I've got the ring. I've got the this. I've got the that. And it's all in my command center. Now they're excited about these homes and they're getting excited about making sure everything's operational. Okay? It's dying for this and nobody's doing it. It's amazing to me that, that nobody's really doing it because it doesn't take that much. What you're looking for right now to do this and knock it out fast as shit, you need an Arduino guy, okay? Arduino Raspberry Pi type guy, okay? These are the guys who do boards, okay? And yeah, um, if you ever see the videos on, on Arduino videos, you see the guy, he's got the little breadboard and he, clips in this he goes he puts a, attaches a little board and he clips on a piece and he attaches a board and he clips on a piece and he does this with some resistors and then he puts a couple of wires in and then he gets this funny little thing that happens this is what these guys do they there's people who do this at 70 years old for fun okay and doing arduino isn't actually hard coming from an old school programming programmer trust me programming and circuitry it's nothing more than Legos. It's copy and paste. That's what it is, okay? I'm not kidding you. They come up with an idea on how to do voltage sensing and they make a board and they sell it. So now it's a cheap, cheap way to just go, oh, I don't have to build the voltage sensor. I can just buy one for like a buck. Okay, here you go. I'm gonna put that one on. I'm gonna put this Lego on, this Lego, this Lego, this Lego. Then you get the guys who pull out their resistors and the, the MOF sets and their own transistors and their own everything and they put them in there and they build something new and they build this cool thing and they go oh i'll make those boards there are companies that will make a little board 35 bucks 
35 bucks. I'm talking prototype only one. You're only gonna have one board made. You're not making 10,000, one board, 35 bucks. Five bucks to have them print the PCB and another 30 bucks for them to add all of the other things such as capacitors and moffet sets and all the rest of the things that go on the board. Okay, and they're gonna, they solder, do all the work, get perfect. And it's ready to go out the door to a customer practically. You have them ship those to a boxing facility and they can go out the door to Amazon and sell them for a, you know, whatever each or in a set, you know, five for 10 bucks type thing. And they only sell them for five for 10 bucks because 10 bucks is pretty much the lowest you can get something for on Amazon. I mean, they do have some cheaper stuff, but you pretty much gotta buy something for 10 bucks because otherwise it's not worth getting it on Amazon because all of the other excess costs are too much. So you have to buy it in bulk in order to get it. Um, but no, that's all they're doing. It's, it's so easy to build those boards. And then what they do is they just take all these different boards, put them together, match it all up and then go, okay, I take this, I put this into this software, okay? And there's software for this, they take this and they draw out in the software, this is what I put. I put this here, and I put this here, and I put this here. And then it models up for them a board, okay? Once they model up the board, okay, now you've got a board. How do you program it? Go to a programmer's website, and you get on there, and it's everybody going, hey, who knows how to, have you, has anybody ever done this? Has anybody ever done this? Has anybody ever done this? And there are answers on a million and one different of those things. And it's just, oh, copy, paste. Okay, I need that. Then I needed a this, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, do a few little edits, and ta-da, it works. That's basically programming, okay? There are people who will then invent a way of doing things. They just think about it and they do it. And, and they come up with new stuff. And yeah, it gets out into the ether and everybody gets it. Okay, um, it's not hard, but you're gonna want to get an Arduino uh, and possibly a Raspberry Pi type person. The Raspberry Pi or Android person is gonna be working more at an operating system level that uses drivers to talk to the boards and, and the machines, okay? So the Android guy, personally I prefer Android, but you know you're gonna have Apple people. Think of it like car stereos, they still run Apple stuff against an Android. <laughs> they have that. So I would run this on Android. I'd be running these. It's like smaller Arduino level stuff. Um, and the programming is, is all integrate, all integrates between those devices. It's not hard. That's what you're going to want. You're going to want somebody who does Arduino, who does boards. Okay. You're going to want an Android guy who does the application for user interface. So you have somebody who builds the boards, okay, and does programming. You might even want a couple of guys working on different stuff. But if you had one, one guy doing this stuff, doing the boards, then you had another guy doing the user interface and taking all the information and controls that he's giving you and doing this part of it to say, here's how the user can can access it and organize all the controls. Then you have the HVAC guy, the guy who knows how these things work, who can sit there and answer the question, okay, you need to be able to do this step to this step to this step. You're gonna be talking to a one of these, and one of these, and one of these. You need to be able to test this, 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 this. And he's gonna know the nuances of, okay, you have a board granted and it does all these things, but you're gonna need to organize all the pinouts in a way that makes sense to an HVAC guy so that when he goes out there, he's gonna take your board and this board and he's gonna go bunk, 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 and he knows where to put them, okay? And it's gonna make sense to him, all right? You're gonna have all kinds of information that the HVAC guy can do, not to mention the fact that he knows where all the manuals are. And every manual for these damn things practically has the full wire schematic that you can give to the Arduino guy and he's gonna go, oh, Perfect, it just tells me what I need to do. I can do it with this, snaps together, okay? All of that is there, the programming for it. It tells you what the sequences are, okay? And you can tell which sequence you need and you can put that as options, okay? All of those different things. So, 
Arduino, Android, and an HVAC guy. If you guys could just get together, seriously, get in the comments and start doing it, push it out there, you guys can make millions, okay? Now, if you want to look at this and, and try to give me crap and say, oh, why don't you do it? Well, I don't need to do it. I'm happy with this and I'm going to wait for my kid to get home from school and I'm going to go play with him and have fun. I'm going to go help my sister with something. I'm going to go do this. That's what my life is, okay? I'm giving you this because I want the world to be better and this is my way of doing it. That's about it, okay? And if you're going to sit here and just go into, oh, well, you're going to have this problem and that problem and go, okay, are you looking at solving that or are you just trying to tell me that this is a stupid idea? Because if you're telling me this stupid idea, then I'm going to tell you you're not the person I'm here to talk to, okay? You're the kind of person who's gonna call everything a stupid idea. Yeah, you are. You're the person who's gonna sit there and downtrod this and go, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. You know what? I'm not gonna waste my time. If you don't think it's a good idea, then move the fuck on. I'm gonna move the fuck on too. Bye. So, um, the best you're gonna get out of me is, is, yeah, I might make fun of you in the comments. Because most of the times when people do that shit, they are way off base. <laughs> so, um, you do actually have questions about things that, that might matter and, and might make things better or come up against something. Let me know. Otherwise, you're seriously looking at something that can improve people's lives, could literally become the next craze of automotive i've got to have the best computer no i have the best home system for smart house stuff all taken care of oh my house look at this i even got the integration for the thing and the next thing you know everybody's got a smart house with up and down window shades and everything else why because somebody took control and said i want ownership of that command center because they can build the little things i will command the house and they'll rely on me. I'll be the Microsoft. They want to be the little, uh, you know, the guy who does the little stuff and the little tiny pieces and the, the sound card people and the, that. No, they can do that. They want to be WinZip. They want to be Word. Fine. I'm going to be the operating system. I'm going to be the thing that controls everything. So, all right, this got a bit long, but like I said, going to go through the whole thing a little bit more thorough give you more understanding of the, the type of marketing pieces that you're looking at, the type of reasoning that you want to have different pieces in there. Go do it. 